Welcome to the Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman. You're about to learn a new slant on investing, some exciting techniques, and fresh new approaches to the world's most historically proven asset class that will enable you to create more wealth and freedom than you ever thought possible. Jason is a genuine, self-made multimillionaire who's actually been there and done it. He's a successful investor, lender, developer, and entrepreneur who's owned properties in 11 states, had hundreds of tenants and been involved in thousands of real estate transactions. This program will help you follow in Jason's footsteps on the road to your financial independence day. You really can do it. And now, here's your host, Jason Hartman, with the complete solution for real estate investors. Welcome to episode 1596, 1596, and I hope this isn't boring you because it is beginning to bore me, <laughs> I must say. And we will not, and I'm not talking about politics, by the way, not interested in talking about politics at the moment, but we'll be back to that especially as it affects our money and our investments. And it does affect our money and investments. But the subject of people leaving big cities, you know, this is maybe getting a little bit overplayed. I predicted it before anybody. I predicted it back in February when I saw what was going on in Italy. Uh, that made me especially aware of it, but also even in, back in Wuhan, okay? But now there are whole other reasons. And here's my new prediction about this. I'm going to play a, a clip for you here in a moment. And of course, today we have part two of Doug Casey from yesterday. Not No need to listen to them consecutively. Not important. Uh, just catch yesterday's episode if you haven't already, whenever you can. If you're hearing this first, it doesn't matter. They can, they can be in any order. Not, not critical. But as far as this mass migration that we've been talking about, so the new thing is what I announced on Sunday, the flattening of America. Hugely significant, very, very important concept, the flattening of America. If you did not hear my Sunday live stream where I went into that. You can go on YouTube or Facebook. YouTube's probably the better place to watch it if they haven't censored it and taken it down yet. <laughs> or Facebook hasn't. Oh, the tech gods. We must bow to the gods of technology. So uh, I, I talked about the flattening of America. How as people are leaving these cities, these bright, ambitious people who in a Darwinian sense, couldn't afford to live in these expensive areas like New York, San Francisco, LA, these expensive areas, Boston, whatever, right? And they couldn't afford this high cost of living unless they were very educated, smart, and ambitious, right? Those people, it's just Darwinism, right? That's all it is, just Darwin acting in an economic sense, it's economic Darwinism. But as those people leave these overpriced expensive cities for a whole variety of suburban markets around the US, guess what we have? We have the flattening of America. We will see, one of my predictions on this, is we will see a massive reallocation of brain power as the cities have experienced a brain drain and that will continue. And the high tax, high crime, high cost of living jurisdictions usually liberal, usually leftist politics, usually Democrats running them. They have a good uh, knack at ruining everything. You know, listen, that's not even a political statement. Just look at Detroit, look at all the other places they've touched, look at Baltimore. It's a disaster. Look at California, look at Seattle, look at Portland, look at New York. I mean, this is not an argument, folks. It's simply an observation. It's a fact, okay? So as people leave these places, these bright, ambitious, educated people with way more spending power, okay? As they leave those places, we will see a reallocation of brain power. We will see a reallocation of venture capital. We will see a reallocation of tech startups spread all around the country. 
whereas before they were concentrated in Silicon Valley and in Silicon Alley and in the Tech Triangle and so on and so forth. Now that is flattening America. It is spreading out. It will be more evenly dispersed. And that is great news for all of you friends who have been following my advice for the last 16, 17 years and investing in these markets. Uh, so our advice really didn't change much. It's simply an accelerant to what we were already advising. Now, listen to this clip, and this is from the New York Post, okay? And you're gonna hear some residents interviewed. It's just a very short clip, just about a minute, but I think you'll find this insightful. It was the pandemic, but really, I think the uptick in crime was really concerning for us. Um, and had it just been me and my husband and my dogs, I don't think we would have had a problem staying, but... Um... You know, is it amazing to you that everybody just talks with totally improper grammar if it was just me and my husband, since when does me come first in the sentence? It would be my husband goes first and then me or I, as the case may be, right? Like, it's unbelievable how just nobody cares about any of this stuff anymore, do they? It's so sad. Oh, well, and nobody cares about how they look or dress anymore either. So sad. Watch old movies, watch old TV shows. Continuing tangent alert back on track once we saw the city start to devolve and things become less safe and less clean and we've been back several times um to do various things in the city so we've seen it firsthand and it really it really upset us and it's not really a place we want to raise a child anymore to have spaces like this and the atlantic ocean so what you're looking at now, well, you're not looking at it, but I am, you're looking at a man in the Hamptons, okay? You know, it says, New Yorkers explain why they've fled to the Hamptons. And, um, you know, just greater space and where I live and an outdoor area that I can just step out to. Um, I have a great circle of friends out here, many of which um, have come out here uh, also more semi-permanently. So it's just, it's been amazing, actually. And the picture of the guy in the Hamptons with the sea. But you get the idea. There is this mass migration out. The crime is increasing dramatically. Now, check out these statistics. More than 300,000 New Yorkers have bailed from the Big Apple in the last eight months, new stats show. City residents filed 295,103 change of address request from March 1st through October 31st, according to data the Post obtained from the U.S. Postal Service under a Freedom of Information Act, a FOIA request, right? That's great that we have the FOIA laws, right, where they can get information like that. Since the data details only when 11 or more forwarding requests were made to a particular county outside New York City, the number of moves is actually higher, and a single address change could represent an entire household, which means far more than 300,000 New Yorkers fled the five boroughs. So, Folks, this is just hugely significant, and my prediction is that it will lead to a flattening of America, and that's a good thing. That's a really good thing, a very good thing. You should be happy about it. Like Trump would say, he'd be saying it's a very good thing, it's fabulous, it's, it's just a phenomenal thing. No, not like that. He would say it like... It's fabulous. It's very good. It's it's bigly. <laughs> oh, if that guy isn't reelected, I'm going to miss his uh, unusual speech patterns. But then again, Joe Biden's got some unusual speech patterns, too, because he's just mentally deficient. I mean, what else can we say, right? So major crimes have been on the rise this year. The number of murders in the Big Apple in New York hitting 344 by October, surpassing the count for all of 2019. The number of shootings through November 8th is up. You ready for this, folks? 
You ready for this? Are you sitting down? Are you ready? Are you ready? Here it comes. The number of shootings up through November 8th is up 94%. 94% increase over last year. Wow. That is so sad. I mean, can you imagine if you, hopefully none of you, probably none of you this applies to because you're listening to my show, you've been following my advice for the past many years, and you don't own these expensive properties in New York that are plummeting in value, okay? I mean, the crime, the taxes, the interference in people's lives, the brain drain, people just fleeing from these places. And the same is true of California, but in California, it's much less concentrated because obviously it's a much bigger place, you know, geographically and in terms of population too. I mean, it's almost 40 million people in California, but declining rapidly. And the thing about California is that the, the, demographics, well, I should say the population demographics, just population numbers, don't change as dramatically. Why is that? Well, because you have these silly sanctuary cities, well, not silly, but epically stupid sanctuary cities, and you have people coming there for handouts. Well, the people paying taxes and obeying the law and contributing, not wanting handouts, are leaving. So the net migration, the net out migration in California is not as pronounced because they have, uh, you know, build themselves and basically advertise themselves as the place to come for handouts, the place to come if you want to leech off of society. Now, I get it, you know, I'm a bleeding heart capitalist, okay? I'm not that cold hearted. I understand that people for temporary points in their lives need aid, okay? Almost nobody, unless they are permanently disabled, needs aid forever okay, for their life. That should only be, for the vast, vast majority of people, a very temporary situation to help people get back on their feet. And there is a place for government in both of those categories. But sadly, the leftists that are, that have way more power than they should, have made it a permanent condition because it disables people. It makes them permanently dependent on the government largesse. And that is obviously a recipe for disaster, uh, you know, happens over and over again. So this is the flattening of America we're seeing, but we are also seeing a massive amount of money pour into these suburban markets. Now, granted, some of these suburban markets are ultra ritzy, expensive markets like the Hamptons, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. Yes, there are certainly wealthy New Yorkers that already had a, a, a second home in the Hamptons and they just went there, big deal, right? Forgive me, I can't remember her last name, but Dottie, the CEO of Douglas Selliman Real Estate on the show several months ago, talking about that, right? So, so that's a trend. But the most of the bulk of the trend is people moving to less expensive, reasonably priced suburban markets where they can have a better life for less money and certainly lower taxes as well. So this is a, a giant trend, folks. It's a big deal and you are on the cutting edge to take advantage of it. And I got to tell you, I am really excited about our webinar on Thursday for Charlotte. A whole bunch of you have signed up already. Uh, so Charlotte, North Carolina, just a fantastic city. Absolutely love that city. I've made good money on property there myself. I told you about how I cashed out, did a 1031 exchange on my last property there. I got two for one. It was a great deal. So join us for that. Go to jasonhartman.com slash Charlotte. jasonhartman.com slash Charlotte and register for our Thursday 
Charlotte webinar. You do not want to miss this webinar. In addition to having a market profile and introducing you to our new construction builder in Charlotte, you will meet him and you'll see pictures of the properties he's got. Really some great offerings there. But you're also going to get some content. I forgot to do that with our Alabama webinar that we did recently. Uh, by the way, if you missed that one, you can find the replay at jasonhartman.com slash sweet home. But I didn't do any teaching on that one. And this one, I remembered to do a little bit of teaching and uh, show you some charts and things that I think will be interesting. So you'll get both of those things for the Charlotte webinar on Thursday, jasonhartman.com slash Charlotte. Now let's get to part two of Doug Casey, the international man, the anarcho-capitalist international man. Here he is. But hey, let's talk about the election, Doug. There's so much going on. We got to get to that. You know, what what can we expect? You know, it the whole system, I think we've all can agree that it's it's corrupt. It was corrupt without, you know, voter fraud and miscounting ballots and all of that because we have a two-party system. That makes it corrupt on its face. But we are where we are. What can we expect? I think we can expect the worst in this election because the country is really divided philosophically. It's like a marriage where you and your wife have learned to hate each other because you just disagree on what's right and wrong. You disagree on what's good and bad, what should and shouldn't be done. And that's the way things are right now between the red counties and the blue counties. I don't see how it can get better. People can't change their whole psyche. So the, the optimal solution to what we're confronting now a veritable cultural revolution in the U.S. And I, I use that word, I'm trying to use that word accurately. What we're on the edge of is something that's similar to what China went through from 1966 to 1976. This is really serious and really ugly, where people really differ on the most basic levels of things. So, but I don't see how the U.S. can break up so that... Uh, People are in different political entities uh, easily. It can happen. It should happen. Instead, they're going to be contesting for who controls Washington and who gets to boss the other group around. This is not a happy situation. No, it's definitely not a happy situation. But what can we expect? What are the markets going to do? What about commodities prices? What about housing? I mean, the housing market is booming. It is, I've never, I've been doing this an awful long time, Doug, and I've just never seen a market with inventory this low and this much. My, I mean, the migration is a big part of it. Thankfully, our investors are buying suburban properties. So that's where all the action is, right? But yeah, I mean, if you're in New York City or San Francisco, I think you're, you're in bad shape or downtown LA or, you know, Seattle or any of these high density areas where you've got BLM and you've got COVID and, you know, all of these, uh, uh, all of this civil unrest. But what's the market going to do? Real estate, stocks, commodities, interest rates, whatever you want to say about that. I mean, you're a financial guy. Well, I agree. First of all, as far as property in the big cities is concerned, uh, they're essentially dead ducks. And for a good long time, because the governments of these municipalities are bankrupt and their main source of income it's real estate taxes. Yeah, afterwards. and 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 that is under attack. That's going to suffer greatly, and they're going to go even more bankrupt than they already are. So, if you're investing in municipal bonds <laughs> in these kinds of places, watch out because you're uh, likely to see some defaults. That's going to be That's, pretty ugly, and the pension and crisis. And, and if you own property in these big cities, the real estate taxes are going to go up. Furthermore. Your occupancy is likely to go way down in the future as yep. people move out. At the same time, as I've found in Aspen, the rich are moving in because it's safe and it's quiet and people generally share values uh, with you, mostly liberal values, I've got to say. Or I shouldn't even use the word liberal, I should say statist and collectivist values are very different from what liberal values historically have been because it comes from the word I mean, right. they have hypocrite values in those <laughs> places yes yeah. right so what are you going to do right now with at the same time real estate's being driven upwards 
because it floats on a sea of debt. And right now, with interest rates, real interest rates being a negative, and actual interest rates, 2 3%, something like that in the real world, eventually, interest rates, first of all, the dollar is going to turn into toilet paper because they're creating trillions of them as we speak. They've already created trillions, they're creating trillions more. They have no alternative. Right. Trump, Biden, makes no difference. Yeah, but they're both... They're both spenders. They're both going to dole out the goodies, the stimulus, whatever. They're they're going to print for, and they're already printing. I mean, it's just a foregone conclusion. But Doug, just you know, I mean, I, I know the inflation rate is a lot higher than the government would lead us to believe, than the official stats say. But even uh, you know that statement notwithstanding, and we both agree with that statement. I, I'm sure you agree with me. Without even answering, you know, there still hasn't been anywhere near as much inflation as we might expect, given the amount of money creation coming out of the Great Recession, this time around with COVID. The inflation, there's some inflation there for sure, a lot higher than we're being told, but it's not dramatic yet. You're quite correct. This is in many ways a mirror image of the 70s, when the amount of money being created wasn't remotely comparable to what we have today, but retail prices were running away in the 70s. People forget that Nixon put on wage and price controls. Right. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. So it's not nearly as bad as that, but the financial markets were devastated. They were, in real terms, as cheap as they'd been during the 1930s. So now all that money is flowing into the financial markets, stocks, bonds and real estate, but it's going to float down to a retail level too. So look out. And eventually, while the dollar is really inflated out of existence, this is very, very serious, interest rates will eventually go back to the levels, I think, and beyond what they were in the early 80s, which you might recall, we're talking 12 and 15% for government borrowings. We're looking at very tough times. So what do you do? What do you do? Can't buy most stocks. They're grossly overpriced. Bonds are a triple threat to your capital. You've got interest rates. You've got default risk. You've got the current- And huge risk. inflation risk. Yeah, forget about it. With bonds, I, I see a lot of problems with a lot of kinds of real estate. Some are okay, much better than others. So where do you go? Well, all I can see at this point is commodities in general, but in particular, the precious metals, gold and silver. I hate to uh, tell people to buy gold when it's at all-time highs, but I think it's going much higher, much higher. And more than that, I think what you have to do is reorient your psychology. You can't really be an investor today. You can't really be a saver today. The world's too unstable. You're forced to be a speculator. And what does right. that mean? Which is not fair because older people who've saved money, who've been conservative, who delayed gratification are forced into these speculative investments that can ruin their retirement. I mean, yes, it's, it's so unfair what's happened. Now, this isn't new. This isn't news. This has been going on for decades, but mm -hmm. it's, it's even more acute now, I'd say, right? You're quite correct. Yeah. The only place that I think you should go right now is gold stocks, which gold is going higher, silver is going higher, uh, and these stocks are very, very cheap right now. They're under-owned. Every gold-producing stock in the world right now, their market cap is not quite what the cap, or, or just slightly greater, I should say, than the amount of cash that Apple alone has in its bank accounts. That's how cheap they are. And most fund managers have been, they don't believe in gold. They think it's a pet rock. Yeah. Uh, well, so they think it's a barbarous relic, to quote uh, Alan Greenspan. <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah. So they don't own gold. It's very underowned, and gold stocks are very, very cheap. Looked at from many points of view, price earnings ratio, all kinds of things. Okay. All right. So, yeah. but would you say commodities in general and what about rare earth metals, you know, um, and, and the thing, you know, the thing that's the wild card, Doug, it's a little further away, but I don't know if it's that far away is the asteroid mining. I mean, that could just 
tank the market for all of these, what we consider precious here on earth because it's so abundant in space, right? And, you know, Japan has already achieved that. They have sent a probe to an asteroid, collected material, brought it back to earth. We can do it today, you know, and there are companies that are, you know, raising money to do just this you know, as we speak. You're quite correct. And Elon Musk is hoping to uh, land on Mars by 2024 and not long thereafter, make it a colony on Mars, self-sustaining. So, And, and part of that whole Mars project needs to include asteroid mining just for the water, if nothing else. But yeah. Yeah. Things are advancing at the rate of Moore's law, and not just in computers, in a number of areas, right. robotics yep. and nanotechnology and biotech. So it's a wonderful time that we're moving into from one point of view. But I'm afraid from politically and economically and our personal freedom point of view, it's going to be very, very scary. That's why, incidentally, that's one of the reasons why I've written with my co-author, John Hunt, a series of novels exploring what's going to happen in the future and what's happening now. We just came out with one. I've got to give you this commercial, Jason. I know you Go for it. Yeah, Assassin. <laughs> Assassin. This yeah. is I brought a copy with me. And uh, basically, it's uh, talking about what's happening today. And the question is, Charles Knight, our hero, is trying to reform the unjustly besmirched occupation of political assassination. And the question we ask is, is political assassination moral or immoral, right or wrong? Uh, is it effective? Does it really change anything? Or does it make... Well, look, the, the, the CIA does it, so... <laughs> it, it does, and, and would you, if you believe that Bill Clinton actually committed dozens of Arkansides, which could be termed assassinations. Uh, Arkansides, I've never heard that. I mean, yeah, Arkansas. He's from Arkansas, folks, so yeah, that's right. funny. <laughs> so yeah, this goes on, uh, it's the nature of politics, that people kill each other, uh, mostly in the form of wars where hundreds of thousands of people are involved, but uh, on a personal one-to-one -one level, what about assassination? And yeah. I'm interested in the moral questions as much as the technical yeah. questions of how. Okay, so the, no, the novel explores it. And um, can people get that at International Man? Or do they have to go to leftist Amazon or elsewhere? <laughs> well, they can go to internationalman.com. And hard, hardback novels will be available there shortly. But at the moment, yes, Amazon does do a service by... Um, they're the largest publisher in the world by yeah. far today. Until they well, censor you and shut you down, yes. No, I haven't had any problems. No, that but they, they've shut a lot of other people down. Well, yeah, I'm sure that's in the cards. So get this book before, because it's highly politically incorrect. And I've, I've got to say that I've been reading the book myself, having written and edited it. Uh, but now I'm reading it in the form of a paper, like a, an ordinary reader. And it is one hell of a good book. I'm very proud of it. Everybody should read it because it is, most people think it's about Trump and killing Trump, although we we do a lot of things that are very, very different. But uh, no, buy this book. I promise you. It, well, it wouldn't be about time. that because I, I would guess that out of the two terrible choices we always get, you would have been a uh, Trump voter uh, more than a Biden voter, right? Well, faced with Scylla and Charybdis, you've got to choose Scylla. That's correct. Yeah. Because uh, at least Trump better is a than, culture. Trump's better than the alternative, for sure. Yes, he is. He's a cultural conservative. Yeah. He'd at least like to see the U.S. return to the days of Ozzie and Harriet and Father Knows Best, as opposed to Kamala Harris, who actually would like to foment a Marxist revolution with her buddies in the Gang of Four, AOC and the rest of them. And so if, if, if Biden is determined to be the winner, she may well become president because Biden is uh, needs to retire uh, well, a long no, time ago, actually. So, yeah. I mean, I, you know, you've got to lose respect for the average voter, assuming that the election results reflect the average voter, which is another question. How much cheating is there? Quite a bit, I'd say. Yeah. Probably on both sides, but much more on the Democrat side. Now, this is uh, this election is uh, a major turning point in the U.S. It's going to be a serious 
as the election of 1860. And I hope we don't go into a civil war. I hope it's, it just turns into a mellow secession of uh, the different groups in the US, but unlikely. Nobody wants to see the US for, and I don't say America. America is a concept and a wonderful one, but it's a dead duck. It's been washed away. It's now the United States. And uh, nobody, no president wants to see the US break up on his watch, which is pretty much the thinking that Lincoln had. Well, we shall see. Uh, Let's all hope for the best. And we are on the edge right now. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen with this election. And it's just a crazy time. So got to pray for the country and let's hope for the best. Doug, thanks for joining us. Uh, The website is uh, internationalman.com, right? Yes. All right. Thanks again. Good to have you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, hartmanmedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own. And if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go Go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.